Imagine a harbor without a coastline, giant cargo ships, floating not on the edge of an ocean, but in the heart of a sun-scorched desert. This is the vision for one of the most audacious engineering projects ever conceived. In the vast, arid landscapes of southern Israel, a plan is taking shape to defy nature itself, to carve a seaport out of the sand, pump it full of seawater, and connect it to the world with a railway that stitches together a barren wilderness. This is the story of the Southern Gateway Port. It's a project born from geopolitical necessity, fueled by monumental ambition, and fraught with seemingly insurmountable challenges. With a potential price tag of $20 billion, it promises to reshape global trade and secure a nation's economic independence. Or it could become a cautionary tale, a ghost port sinking into the sands, a monument to a dream that was too big to build. Why would a country attempt such a thing? The answer lies not just in maps and economics, but in a desperate search for a safe passage to the world. To understand the why, we must first look at Israel's unique and challenging position on the map. Over half of the country's land is the Negev Desert. More critically, it is surrounded by nations with which it has shared a complex and often tense history. This reality has a direct and profound impact on how Israel survives and thrives. It has no safe overland trade routes. Because of this, a staggering 98% of all goods from the fuel that powers its cities to the food on its tables must arrive by sea. The lifelines for these essential supplies are Israel's two main ports, Haifa and Ashdod, located on the Mediterranean coast in the north. For any ship heading to these ports from Asia, there is only one feasible route through the Suez Canal in Egypt. The Suez Canal is a 120-mile-long marvel of engineering, a vital artery for global commerce. But for Israel, it is also a strategic vulnerability. The canal is notoriously narrow, at some points just 670 feet across. For modern megaships like the Ever Given, which stretches over 1,300 feet long, navigating this passage is a delicate and precarious task. The world saw just how fragile this artery is in 2021. When the Ever Given ran aground, it blocked the entire canal for six days. In that short time, 422 ships were trapped in a queue, and the global economy lost an estimated $9.6 billion each day. For Israel, that daily loss was equivalent to half of its entire gross domestic product. But this was a temporary crisis. History offers a more prolonged warning. After the Six-Day War in 1967, Egypt closed the Suez Canal for eight long years. Ships bound for Israel were forced to take a 4,000-mile detour around the southern tip of Africa, a journey as long as driving from New York to Los Angeles and back. The problem is not just in the past. As recently as 2024, attacks on shipping in the Red Sea forced over 2,000 vessels to abandon the Suez route for the same long detour around Africa, adding 10 to 14 days to their journeys and millions in extra fuel costs. The most daunting fact for Israel is this. It has zero control over the Suez Canal. Egypt controls the gates. Egypt can raise transit fees, which have skyrocketed to over $700,000 per trip for some ships, and can pause traffic for political or security reasons. Israel's economic lifeline is, essentially, held in the hands of another country. Faced with this northern bottleneck, Israel logically looked south. Here, on the tiny strip of coastline along the Red Sea, sits the city of Eilat. On a map, it looks like the perfect solution, a direct gateway to the Indian Ocean that could bypass the Suez Canal entirely. In reality, Eilat is a geographical prisoner. The city is crammed into a mere seven-mile sliver of land boxed in by harsh rocky mountains to the north and the international borders of Jordan and Egypt to the south. The body of water it sits on, the Gulf of Aqaba, is only nine miles wide, a narrow maritime corridor it must share with its neighbors. There is virtually no room to grow, as a result, the Port of Eilat is simply not equipped for the 21st century. It handles a tiny 50,000 shipping containers a year. To put that in perspective, the Port of Haifa handles 1.46 million containers, nearly 30 times more. The water in Eilat's harbor is too shallow for modern ships, it's 40 feet deep. But the new generation of container ships needs at least 55 feet to dock. The big ships literally cannot get in. The problems continue on land. Elot has no railway connection to the rest of Israel. Every container that arrives must be loaded onto trucks for a 150-mile journey across the desert to population centers like Tel Aviv. Transporting goods by truck is at least twice as expensive as by train, driving up costs and making the route economically uncompetitive. Plans for a $8 billion railway have been discussed for over a decade, 
a line that would require 60 bridges and tunnels to cross the rugged desert. But so far, it remains just a plan, stalled by cost and complexity. Expanding the port itself is also not a real option. Elat is Israel's premier beach resort town, famous for its coral reefs and attracting millions of tourists each year. Industrial expansion would come at the direct expense of its thriving tourism industry and could damage one of the world's most unique marine ecosystems. So Israel found itself in a perfect storm. It couldn't rely on Suez, and its natural southern exit was too small, too shallow, and too isolated. A radical new idea was needed, and it came in the form of a question. If we can't move the port to a better sea, can we move the sea to a better port? This brings us to the breathtaking core of Israel's plan, the Southern Gateway Port. The concept is as simple as it is revolutionary. Instead of building a new port on the crowded coast, they will build one inland, in the open spaces of the desert, just a few miles from the Red Sea. The proposed site is north of Eilat, near the Jordanian border. Here, engineers would not construct a port out into the water, but would instead dig a massive, human-made basin into the desert floor. The proposed dimensions are almost unimaginable. Length, nearly 5 miles long, width, over 1,000 feet wide, depth 50 feet deep, enough for the largest container ships. This colossal, desert-docked lagoon would be filled with 80 million cubic feet of seawater, pumped directly from the Gulf of Aqaba. To create this cavity, over 100 million tons of earth and rock would need to be excavated and moved. To help visualize that scale, it is equivalent to the volume of 13 Great Pyramids of Giza. But digging the hole is only the beginning. The real engineering challenge is keeping it a functioning, stable body of water. A five-mile-long underground pipeline would act as an artery, carrying seawater from the gulf to the basin. Gigawatt-powered pumps would serve as an artificial heart, constantly circulating water to combat rapid evaporation in the extreme desert heat. The entire floor of the basin would be lined with a special, waterproof membrane, a giant bathtub liner to prevent salt water from seeping down and contaminating the desert's freshwater aquifers. A 24-7 network of monitoring and pumping stations would manage salinity and water levels. If completed, this would be Israel's first inland port, a direct rival to megaprojects like Dubai's Jebel Ali. It is a testament to the power of human ingenuity, a deliberate attempt to redraw the map not with borders, but with dredges and pipelines. A port, no matter how grand, is useless if it becomes a warehouse in the middle of nowhere. A desert harbor filled with ships is just a museum exhibit, unless there is a highly efficient way to get the goods to their final destination. This is why the second half of the Southern Gateway project is just as critical as the first, the Negev Railway. This proposed 155-mile rail line is an engineering marvel in its own right. The Negev Desert is a harsh, barren expanse. From above, it is a landscape of rock, wind, and the shifting shadows of sand dunes. Building here is immensely difficult. To cross this terrain, the railway would require the construction of over 60 bridges, tunnels, and viaducts. It would quite literally stitch the desert together with steel and concrete. The projected cost for this rail line alone is $8 billion, a figure that highlights the immense challenge. For comparison, $8 billion is roughly what it costs to build the Golden Gate Bridge over 700 times over. It is also comparable to the budget for a large section of California's high-speed rail. This staggering sum would be spent on a single freight line, all for the purpose of moving containers from an artificial sea in the desert to the markets of Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. The payoff, however, could be transformative. Freight trains would make the cross-desert journey in about two and a half hours, moving over 10 million tons of cargo each year. This would complete what is known as a land bridge. Here's how it would work. A massive container ship from China arrives at the southern gateway port. Instead of continuing through the Suez Canal, it offloads its containers. They are placed directly onto trains which speed across Israel to ports on the Mediterranean. There they are loaded onto another ship for the final leg to Europe. This entire process could cut the travel time between Asia and Europe by over 10 days, saving shipping companies millions of dollars in fuel and Suez Canal transit fees. For the first time in history, Israel would not just be a destination on the trade map, it would become a central strategic crossroads. For its supporters, the Southern Gateway is far more than a logistics project. It is a national mission, a catalyst for the rebirth of Israel's neglected South. One of the most immediate benefits would be the restoration of Eilat's coastline. By moving the noisy, polluting port activities away from the city, over 400 acres of prime beachfront land would be freed up. 
This space could be transformed into new resorts, public parks, residential areas, and vibrant tourist zones. Proponents dream of turning ILAT into the Miami of the Middle East, a true paradise for residents and visitors alike. Israel's Ministry of Tourism estimates that such a transformation could boost tourism revenue by $1.5 billion a year, four times the profit generated by the old port. The city's population is expected to grow, ushering in a new era of prosperity for the entire region. The project would also relieve the immense pressure on the northern ports of Haifa and Ashdod, which currently handle 90% of the nation's goods and suffer from chronic congestion. Israel loses an estimated $700 million annually due to shipping delays. By diverting Asian traffic to the south, customs clearance times could drop by 30 to 40%, making Israeli imports faster and cheaper. Most importantly, it would grant Israel a measure of strategic independence. Currently, 65% of its imports must pass through the Suez choke point. The Southern Gateway would dramatically reduce this dependency, giving the nation control over its own economic destiny. The project is also framed as an engine for green growth. It promises to create over 150,000 jobs and plans to use vast solar panel roofs to power its operations, potentially cutting carbon dioxide emissions by 30%. At full operation, analysts believe it could add 1.8% to Israel's GDP, about $2.5 billion a year. The vision is grand, a prosperous south, decongested northern ports, a thriving environment, and a nation standing as a new hub in global trade. Yet between this inspiring dream and reality stands a wall of monumental risks, both financial and natural. The first and most obvious hurdle is the cost. The estimated price tag has ballooned to between $15 and $20 billion. This is three times Israel's entire annual defense budget. It is the kind of investment typically undertaken by economic superpowers, not a nation of Israel's size. Critics ask a blunt question. Even if it's built, is it truly safe? Ships using the Southern Gateway would still have to sail through the Red Sea, a region known for geopolitical instability where a single missile can disrupt global energy markets. As some experts note, Israel can dodge Suez, but it cannot dodge war. Then there is the silent, deadliest opponent, nature itself. The Gulf of Aqaba is home to the world's northernmost coral reef, a 7,000-year-old ecosystem of stunning beauty and biodiversity. The process of pumping millions of tons of seawater poses a constant threat. One leak, one rupture in the pipeline or the basin liner could release a flood of saltwater and pollutants that would wipe out this fragile reef forever. The desert environment itself is hostile to the project. Summer temperatures regularly soar to 110 Fahrenheit, or 43 degrees, causing extreme water evaporation. This same heat accelerates the corrosion of metal equipment and infrastructure. Maintenance costs for the port are estimated to be over $1 billion every decade, a perpetual financial drain. Finally, there is the question of will. As of 2025, the Southern Gateway port exists only on paper. No land has been broken, no contracts signed. The project is stuck in the pre-feasibility stage, mired in endless reviews as costs skyrocket. A senior official anonymously admitted the project isn't dead, but it is in hibernation. Investors are wary. Private corporations see immense financial and environmental risks with an uncertain return. Furthermore, a bitter irony undercuts the project's goal of independence, to build it. Israel would need to import most of the materials, equipment, and skilled labor through its neighbors, Jordan and Egypt, the very countries it seeks to bypass. The debate over the Southern Gateway port reveals a fundamental conflict not just of economics, but of identity. Is Israel's future best secured by fortifying its existing assets, or by betting everything on a radical, transformative vision? This divide is clear in the court of public opinion. Proponents, often in Tel Aviv's business circles and government planning ministries, see a historic opportunity. They speak in terms of logistics, GDP growth, and strategic depth. They believe that to stand still in a rapidly changing world is to fall behind, and that the massive risk is justified by the existential reward of true economic independence. Opponents, particularly in ILOT and the environmental community, see a different calculation. They ask, at what cost? They argue that the project gambles with the nation's most unique natural treasures and risks bankrupting the state for a promise that may never materialize. For them, the potential destruction of the coral reef and the strain on the national budget are not acceptable trade-offs for a theoretical future. This national conversation is mirrored on the global stage. The international reaction is a clear barometer of the project's potential to disrupt the status quo. The interest from economic powers like India and South Korea, who see a faster route for their goods, 
validates the project's strategic logic. Conversely, Egypt's clear view of the port as a direct threat to its Suez Canal revenue underscores the very vulnerability Israel is trying to escape. The world is watching, because the outcome will affect global trade dynamics for decades to come. So we are left with the core, unresolved question. Is the Southern Gateway a visionary project that will redefine a nation's destiny, or is it a modern-day Tower of Babel destined to be felled by its own ambition? There is no simple answer. The port represents the ultimate clash between human ambition and immutable reality. It is a story of a nation so constrained by its geography and politics that it is willing to attempt the impossible to break free. The vision is breathtaking, the engineering formidable, and the potential rewards immense. Yet the desert is unforgiving, the sea is fragile, and the financial costs are almost unimaginable. For now, the project remains a powerful idea, a line on a map, a set of blueprints, and a subject of intense debate. The sands of the Negev remain undisturbed, holding their secret. Whether they will one day cradle a bustling seaport or simply continue to blow over the ghosts of a forgotten dream is a story yet to be written. The future is not just something that happens, it's something we build, debate, and decide. This isn't just Israel's story, it's a parable for our time. Where do you stand? Do you see the Southern Gateway as a necessary leap of faith or a reckless gamble? What would you do if the decision were in your hands? We want to hear your voice. Share your verdict in the comments below and join the conversation with viewers from around the world. If these grand stories of ambition, innovation, and the human struggle against the elements captivate you, don't let the exploration end here. Help our channel bring more untold stories to light. Subscribe now, hit the like button, and ring the notification bell so you never miss a journey into the forces shaping our world.